What is going on, everybody? I am Mike. Welcome back to Tech 24 7 TV. I'm glad that you're back with me today because we're talking about keyboards. Now, if you are the owner of an iPad Air 4 and you don't want to spend $300 for the 11 inch Magic Keyboard for your iPad Air 4, I don't blame you. It does offer a great typing experience, it does offer a great trackpad experience, but it does cost a lot of money and it doesn't offer you that much protection. Now, if this sounds like you, you are in the right place because I'm going to review the Logitech Combo Touch as well as the Folio Touch, compare them against the Magic Keyboard. And at the end, I'll tell you which one you should buy. Let's get started. Before we get in the video, YouTube tells me that 90% of you are not subscribed to the channel. I think that is a real shame because I love my iPad. I love making iPad content. And I think you wanna see more of that content. So consider hitting subscribe, turning on notifications, you know, that button right there, so you don't miss out on future content, including my iPad OS 15 full review when it comes out when Apple releases it next month. Now the video itself will be broken down into different sections and I'll have those sections pinned in the first comment below. Anything I talk about in terms of the video, if you wanna pick it up for yourself, you'll find links down in the video description below, right below the like button. Now we'll talk about how these two keyboards are gonna be different, we'll talk about how they're the same and where the noticeable differences are going to be with each of these keyboards, including which one you should buy depending on what your use cases are. First, let's talk about how these keyboards are similar. This is the Logitech Folio Touch, this is the Combo Touch. Each keyboard is wrapped in this fabric case that gives it a nice look and feel. And personally speaking, on the model that I own for my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it does wear very well. Now each keyboard also has this kickstand on the back here, which can be extended in between 20 degrees and 60 degrees for viewing experiences. And this plays into one of the four different modes that you can use with this keyboard. You have the traditional typing mode, you have the view mode, you have the sketch mode, and you have the read mode. Both units offer you full body protection, allowing you to give you confidence in using this that if you do drop it, it won't break your iPad nor the keyboard. It's very well made. Now, along each of these cases themselves, you see here there is gonna be a lip and that lip does protect the inside of the keyboard where if you were to push this closed, you shouldn't necessarily worry about the keys impacting the display itself. Now, you would be able to use this with a screen protector like a paper like, but probably not a tempered glass screen protector. I don't know, I don't use a screen protector, but if you have this with a screen protector, let me know in the comments below which one you're using. Now, of course, since these models are made for the iPad Air 4, it does give you full access to the Touch ID button right here on the side, and it works exactly how you would expect. You won't have to worry about any type of Bluetooth pairing. It's not cumbersome at all. It does use the smart dock connector, which is on the back of your iPad Air 4, so you never have to worry about charging this or pairing it. All you have to worry about is charging your iPad. By extension, what that means is that this does not use Bluetooth. It only uses the internal smart dock connector that's native on your iPad. On this model here, if you were to separate the keyboard from the case itself, you would not be able to use the keyboard. It's non-functional. It has to be physically connected just like that. Now there is a full row of iPadOS function keys giving you access to all the same shortcuts, which include home button, screen brightness, on-screen keyboard, search key brightness, media control keys, volume keys, and on off. Additionally, there is a globe button on the bottom left-hand corner for each one of these keyboards, which gives you quick access to the language selector, or you can use it to select emojis. Now that's where the similarities stop and this is where the keyboards get very different. Each of these keyboards have a different price point. The Logitech Folio Touch is $149 to $159 depending on where you could find it. And the Combo Touch is gonna to be $199. Now each of these keyboards have a different weight. You have the Folio Touch coming in at 642 grams compared to a much lighter 574 grams for the Combo Touch. Now that is due to the thickness of the Combo Touch being much thinner the typing experience on each of these keyboards are gonna be very, very similar, if not the same. There is 18 millimeters of key pitch, which is the distance between each one of these keys, and one millimeter of key travel, which is the depth that the key is depressed. Here on the combo touch, this keyboard is gonna be removable, so you can simply take this off like I have here. On the folio touch, that keyboard is physically connected to the iPad case itself. You can't separate it. Say if you want to use it in, say, in read mode, you would actually have to fold that below this in order to go ahead and hold it just like so, which is a little bit of inconvenience. Now, whether it's $50 worth of inconvenience for me, I would say I would not do that. Now, even though the keys are the same, including the function keys across the top, you know, they're all the same, the arrow keys here on the combo touch are gonna be different, where here there's an upside down or reverse T. Here on the folio touch, they are larger left and right arrow keys and smaller up and down arrow keys. 
That's really gonna be personal preference. I really like the inverted T-shaped arrow keys. It's just easier to navigate without looking at the keys themselves. The trackpad is gonna be the next place that you notice the differences here. Folio Touch trackpad is gonna be 3.5 inches by 2.25 inches compared to the Combo Touch where it is 4.5 inches by 2.25 inches. So it's much bigger on the Combo Touch in comparison to the Folio Touch. So if you're looking for something that's gonna give you a little bit more flexibility with maybe using more gestures, that's gonna be the Combo Touch. That's why you would pick that up. On the Folio Touch, the top here is not clickable. So it's a typical springboard where the top is gonna to be affixed to some piece of hardware inside of here and then you can use it anywhere along probably about 80% down from there. If you want to turn on tap to click, you could then use the top area here, which traditionally is not gonna be usable, to use that as a trackpad. Again, that would work on either one, but in terms of surface area and usable surface area, the Combo Touch is gonna to be your winner. Other than that, the next place where you're gonna notice the differences is gonna be here on the top of the Folio Touch. As the name implies, this is a Folio. It does have a magnetic closure that's gonna snap into place. And on the inside of this flap here, it does have slits to store your Apple Pencil in. So while walking around, you can store your Apple Pencil in here and be confident that it's not going to fall out. On the Combo Touch, it is a little bit different. It is gonna rely on the magnets of your iPad Air 4 to hold your Apple Pencil in place. So that is something to consider if you're going to be out and about with this and you don't have a high degree of confidence whether this would hold your Apple Pencil. Maybe you put it in a bag full of stuff and whatever's in your bag could possibly dislodge your Apple Pencil. That's something that you wanna keep in mind. Okay, it is decision time. It's time to figure out which keyboard you wanna buy. Now, if you're looking to solve for price, if you want a great, still a great typing experience and the $40 is too much, you would think that you're gonna go for the Folio Touch. I give you a different way to think about it. If you were keeping this iPad for two, three, four years, well, if you take that additional $50 and divide that by the number of days in that time that you're keeping your keyboard, the price per day that you're paying additional between the Folio Touch and the Combo Touch is really insignificant. So I would say if you are price sensitive, at least consider it that way. The Folio Touch, it does offer more protection because it is thicker and has more rubber on it. It does offer a way to secure your Apple Pencil with this magnetic latch that is on the back. The downsides are, in my opinion, one, that the trackpad is smaller. That's the biggest thing. Two, that this keyboard is not removable, so it makes it a little bit clumsy to use, in my opinion. And three, it's a little bit heavier. That's the downside of it being more protective. Now, the Combo Touch, really has all the same advantages in my opinion. It does have the same you know, keyboard layout. It does have the same keyboard mechanism. It does give you the flexibility to attach the keyboard from the case. It does offer a larger trackpad, even at the expense of nowhere to secure your Apple Pencil, other than using the magnets that's included on your iPad. It is a little bit thinner, it is a little bit lighter, and not offering you as much protection as the Folio Touch. Now at 199, I think this is a pretty solid buy. And the fact that the Combo Touch has that larger trackpad, which can be clicked anywhere, it's gonna give you more usable surface area. Again, that's gonna be the combo touch for you. Also, if you like those T-shaped arrow keys like I talked about, like I'm a fan, you're gonna to wanna to go with the combo touch. This offers, again, in my opinion, it's a little bit thinner, it's a little bit lighter, it does have a better trackpad. I don't necessarily like this flap, maybe some people do. If you do, let me know down in the comments below. But for me, I would rather have the combo touch because I can disconnect this keyboard and then use this without having to worry about having that keyboard attached. I don't have to flip it around the back if I wanna use it. This becomes a much smaller footprint, it's very light and it's just a lot more usable in my opinion. Now that we've answered why you wanna choose the Combo Touch over the Folio Touch, I think the next question is, why would you choose the Magic Keyboard uh, when it comes in at $299? So it's a full $100 more expensive than the Combo Touch. Well, the first thing is that the keyboard typing experience on the Magic Keyboard, it is great. It is a different typing experience. The Magic Keyboard uses scissor switch keys, where here on the Folio Touch and on the Combo Touch, I use butterfly keys. It's not any better or worse, it is different. For someone like me, who where I get comfortable typing within 10 or 15 minutes, the same rules true for any of these keyboards that I use. It's a good typing experience. Now the trackpad experience between the Logitech Folio Touch, Logitech Combo Touch, and the Magic Keyboard, in my opinion, are very, very similar. I have not found a gesture that does not work on either of the Logitech keyboards in comparison to the Magic Keyboard, which I think really is the gold standard. That doesn't change the fact that the Magic Keyboard still costs $300 in comparison to either $149 you know, on the low end with the Folio Touch, $199 on the Combo Touch. And I think that you're getting a very, very like-for-like -like experience. Other than the additional USB-C charging port in the spine of the case, really what the Magic Keyboard is just so good at is the frictionless using of it. It's zero effort to take the keyboard on and off of the iPad itself, it's quite magic. Hey everybody, thank you very much for watching my video on which keyboard to choose for the iPad Air 4. 
I want to know what you think. Let me know down in the comments below what keyboard you're going to choose. I am Mike. This is Tech 24-7 TV. Folks, I will catch you in the next one.